Hi, I'm Daryl, and it has turned into a beautiful Saturday afternoon here in Georgia. I'm currently down in the Oconee National Forest land, uh, down around Monticello. Uh, before I get started, I would like to send a huge shout out and thank you to both Kevin with Overland Florida and Ron with Campfire Grub for their invite to their Jenny Springs meetup down in Florida. I believe the city is High Springs, don't quote me on that, but the name of the park we stayed at is Jenny Springs. Um, now, Jenny Springs is a privately owned park that has just over 200 primitive campsites along the Santa Fe River and along the spring system. There's several natural springs that come out of the ground through there. Uh, some of the most beautiful crystal clear blue water I've seen at those spring heads. Um, if you are a paddle boarder or like tubing or just like some water in your adventure, this is definitely a place that I would suggest checking out. However, I would also suggest that you do your research before going, being that Jenny Springs is privately owned. Some of the rules that you may find in a conventional campground do not apply in a privately owned campground. And needless to say, it's a bit of a party crowd. Um, and if you are somebody that enjoys your peace and quiet or quiet time around nap time, you may, uh, you may want to double check and, and do a little bit of research because it's a bit of a party crowd and that party goes on all night long. So again, Kevin and Ron, um, thank you for the invite. Uh, I look forward to meeting up again. Um, as far as uh, where I've been, I do want to give an update on that. I've seen a lot of the uh, a lot of the comments asking if I was going to do more videos. Uh, we all know the present unprecedented times we experienced through 2020. So reality is, is I didn't do much last year. Um, we got out a few times. Uh, I think I've done a couple light additions to the truck and maybe I can get around and put a video on that, but I really didn't do anything that I thought was relevant to producing any type of content. Um, however, uh, around October of last year, uh, I decided I wanted to add a piece to my off-road travels and kind of step up the base camp game. So I got with the folks over at Off Grid Trailers uh, in Canada and through several days of discussion and putting some numbers together, I pulled the trigger and commissioned the build on an off-grid trailer. So today I am going to find us a nice spot we can pull off and uh, I'm going to do a quick walk around video, nothing too in depth or anything, but a quick walk around video of my 2021 Off Grid Trailers Expedition 2.0. This is my 2021 Off Grid Trailers Expedition 2.0. This is going to be a quick kind of walk around video. Um, there are several videos online uh, that do a further in depth review of um, the accessories they come with and the items you can add. Uh, I wanted to give it some time to uh, get some use out of it before I kind of go into a full in depth review. However, if there's something you want me to go back and uh, touch over, or maybe you got a, a question about something, please, you know, uh, leave a comment and we'll try to get those answered for you. But for now, I just kind of want to do a walk around and do uh, a quick run over on some of the features and, uh, you know, maybe touch on a little bit of the experiences I've had with it. Uh, these trailers, they, outside of your conventional camper trailer, these trailers have a, uh, a hefty expense to purchase them. Um, and you get far less than you do with a conventional camper. However, these trailers are supposedly built to follow the pool rig, meaning wherever the pool rig can go, the trailer can go. So I've, I've had it off-road 
every week since I've owned it. Um, I haven't had it anything too technical, but uh, it's tracking in the the suspension and the way it operates and. It, it, it's actually, it does very, very well from what I've seen. Again, nothing too technical, but um, the more time I have it, uh, we'll, we'll get on some trails to where we can really see if it is capable of doing everything it's built to do. Right here, we have our full out stove and sink or drop out, if you will. It does have a two burner Dometic stove. Um, if you've watched any of the other reviews on these, you've probably already seen it. I've cooked on it. It works great. Um, it's all stainless steel construction. The trailer does have a built-in water pump. Um, it does have a waterless uh, hot water heater, so it's hot water on demand. It uh, It's worked flawless for me. Moving around to the back of the trailer is kind of uh, the storage area. It has adjustable shelves inside, so you can adjust it to uh, however you want to pack your gear. I'm currently running uh, four Forerunner boxes. This is all predominantly um, kitchen stuff. Uh, one keeps some dry foods and stuff in it. Um, I don't really keep any uh, any other camping gear or, or, or recovery gear or anything in the back. This is strictly just kind of a pantry for me. But um, the sky's the limit for however you want to configure this. You do not have to go with the front runner boxes. You can use uh, Rubbermaid boxes, however you want to configure it. Like I said, these shelves go up and down. They can come out. You can stack them, you know, how, whatever you'd like. Coming around to this opposite side, as you can see, it does have your propane tank and your propane tank holder. You have your water fill for your water. It does have a 31 gallon water tank on it. So right here, um, this is what houses your hot water on demand water heater. All the latches, like I said on the other side, they're all compression fit latches. They pull this door tight. It's got good thick weather stripping so no dust and water or anything gets in there. But uh, again, here is your hot water heater. Uh, all you gotta do is turn the gas on, turn your pump on, you have your pump switch right in here. And uh, pilot light at night's on its own. Got hot water on demand. You can adjust the setting for warm to cool, whatever you prefer. The water line does have a lead on it. So you could uh, wash your feet off, wash your kids off, um, wash your dog off. Uh, or when you deploy the shower room, which is here, this swings away and deploys down, um, you can just drop this right inside and shower off in private. Right here is just kind of a little storage area. Um, I guess you could keep your toiletries or your shampoos or whatever you want or whatever items you prefer. Normally, if this isn't here, this is where they would put um, your own board heater if you went for that option. I did not go for that option. These trailers are very, very thickly insulated. I don't think that, uh, I think that the heater itself would be an overkill on a much added expense that's just not necessary. I think um, if you have a small buddy heater or something of that nature, that if you put it inside, it would warm it up just fine and uh, eliminate the need for that additional cost. Coming over to one of the side entries, there's a side entry on both sides to enter the cabin. Just board or whatever you're doing, they can come in here and watch tv or plug their phones to it and watch youtube on a on a bigger screen uh does have two cabinets those cabinets are large and both of them actually go back behind this area so you can cram a lot of stuff whether it's your whether it's your clothes bags or some extra extra items you use around camp there's a there's quite a bit of storage the the trailer does have the max fan i have to say that you can you can reverse this fan to either pull air out or pull air in and if you crack the windows on both sides and push, set the fan up to be pulling air out, it actually pulls a breeze through here strong enough that uh, you can move. Uh, if somebody with long hair, you could actually move their hair. It would blow. It is on a remote. Uh, the remote's over here. Um, it's just a wireless remote. I can do all my settings, turn it on, turn it off from that. Um, I did opt for this little shelf option, which um, anybody that's interested in getting one of these, this shelf looks much bigger 
as an option than what you really get. I thought this was going to come out a lot further and give me more space to put stuff over my head. But if you need a place just to lay your phone and your wallet and items when you when you tuck in at night, it is it is good for that. However, um, the cost for it, I would not opt for this. They they make an option where you can get two um, swing down shelves that appear to be much larger. Um, but if I knew this is what it was going to be, I would have just not opted for it and built something myself. I did get um, some privacy blinds. Um, this is another option that I felt was a little expensive. Um, I'm glad I got them, but for the extra cost for what you get, I just feel that um, we could have done something better with this. But it's cool. Um, you can make it to where you got some privacy in there. And uh, if you want to, you could always uh, just kind of tuck it like this. This is what I do in the evenings. So... I do this right here, then I open this window up just to get the air breeze in with the max fan on. I'll do it on both sides. But um, again, pricey option, but I mean, I guess they're all right. I just, just a little expensive. I thought it was gonna be something a little bit different, that's all. Now on your doors, um, this is pretty neat. Keeps keeps the door from um, swinging open, but it also holds it open. It's kind of got this little, um, kind of little suction cup device that uh, when that uh, rubber bushing goes in there, kind of holds it, holds it in place. It also, it is also a bump stop. So you're not slamming it into the side of your trailer or anything. You will find, um, I got, you'll find the two deep cell batteries. I also have a 1750 watt inverter system on here. The uh, Genius system, this tells it when it's hooked to shore power, when it's hooked to your truck, uh, the solar, it knows which one to switch between. You also have your power kill up here, your main breaker. Um, typically when I'm not using the trailer, I throw the main breaker off and I plug it into my home just to, uh, for the shore of power to keep uh, trickle charge on the batteries. It also has a little extra shelf in here <clears throat> where I keep a couple of items, a power cord, a speaker, just kind of electronics on this side. However, this little bag right here is like all my straps and tie downs and stuff. Just keep it to where I got quick access to it and I'm not funneling around in the back of my truck to find things. So the fridge is on a pullout which is pretty nice because you can uh, get it all the way out here. You can almost use it as a little, little area for prepping, laying stuff on top. Um, I don't have anything in it right now, um, except for a bottle of Jack. <laughs> I took everything out uh, from our trip last weekend just because I wanted to get in here and kind of clean the bottom and everything out. So uh, nothing in there now, but if you're familiar with uh, the ARB fridges or any other Dometic fridges, I mean, you can turn this thing down low enough to freeze meat and everything in the bottom. I usually keep mine set around 30. It, it usually does pretty good uh, on a long weekend, even if you have some hamburgers or some steaks or other meats in there. I just, again, keep them towards the bottom. So on the, what I'm going to call the passenger side, because uh, the passenger side of my truck here, I have a 230-270 awning. Um, it does extend all the way to the front of the trailer, and when it wraps around the side, it wraps completely all the way around the back. So when you're in the back, if you want to call this your pantry or your storage, you actually have... Uh, the, the awning comes over the top of that as well. That awning comes all the way over to this point, which is good because it provides all that shade and coverage there. And if, if you wanted to opt and maybe get the walls for it, you could have all that enclosure. Um, I don't for, ever see the need to have the walls for the awning room. However, I do plan on buying the annex for the 230 tent I have up top. Um, I believe this is the 63 inch walkabout, if I'm not mistaken, it's basically queen size. Um, I think it folds out 96 inches about standard. I could be wrong on that, but uh, plenty big and it's the blackout material. So when you're up inside of it and you have all the windows zipped up and everything, it's pitch black in there, even in the middle of day. 
this here, um, as I mentioned earlier, when we were on this side discussing the water heater, this is the uh, 230. This is their privacy room or shower room, whatever you want to call it. Again, it is on a swivel that is a uh, custom made swivel by uh, off grid trailers when it's, it swivels away all the way to the back here so you can deploy it that way with your tent out. You have your shower room over here in this area, and then you have underneath your tent here. And if you were to put an annex, your shower room is away from your annex. However, if you weren't going to use the shower room, don't opt for it. It's an expensive add-on. And if you were going to do the tent with an annex, you could always shower in that annex if you wanted to. So um, I did like the idea of the privacy room. And um, so we went ahead and added it. I didn't have them add the annex to this. I felt their cost on it was a little high, and I could probably get a little bit cheaper. I do have the um, spare tire option uh, fitted on the trailer only because I wasn't sure if I could um, commission an eight lug axle or eight lug spindles on there and I really didn't want to add any more or any more cost to this build. So I am running a spare tire for the trailer. It does add a little bit of weight um, as well as my spare tire on my truck which adds between the trailer and the, the back bumper and tire adds a tremendous amount of tongue weight. So um, I'm going to try to determine a resolve or a fix for that. I'm looking at a couple different options for airbags, but I need something that's not gonna tear on the off-road and something that's not gonna set me back so much that it's really just um, not worth getting. So uh, I am looking for options. Uh, the trailer does have this built-in cargo rat. It is solid. You can put your chairs, your firewood, whatever you want up there, you can strap a cooler down. So there it is again, that's my 2021 Expedition 2.0 uh, off-grid trailers build. Um, after I get some use, uh, like I said, I, I, I will do a further in-depth video. I just want to put it through its paces and see how everything works and if it's holding up. But if anybody has a question or wants to see something more closely, uh, just leave a comment and let me know what it is you want to see. I will do my best to go all through, through all the comments. Um, and if I get enough uh, inquiries on it, then uh, I'll, I'll throw together a video, whether it's on the suspension, the interior, um, the tent, whatever you'd like to see.